I know I have to start a podcast because it's an important marketing tool in our modern business world. And everybody that has a podcast and can jump on the bandwagon. That's when you know that you need one and that it's become a staple of the way we do business. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. A lot of people will be hearing this at any time of the year, but for a couple of you who are true fans and listening over the holidays, I just wanted to let you know that I'm not really going to do a solo episode today, even though that would be the normal thing. I'm going to take a little break for just three weeks total. And so this is going to be one of the recordings of uh, an interview that I had that I think will help you to become a better podcaster. So let's just dive in. What's up, podcaster? It's your host, Adam A. Adams. And I'm joined today with a friend of mine who's been a friend for a few years and is doing real estate. She's thinking about starting a podcast. This is going to be a coaching call. So if you're kind of curious if it's worth it to start a podcast, if you're wondering what is the actual ROI, how can I measure it? How do I know if I'm doing okay? Those are some of the questions that Emma's got today. She's like wondering, should I even do this? So let's figure it out. And hopefully if you're in the same boat, you'll be able to learn along the way. If you can hear that I'm stuffy, I'm sorry. I was exposed to COVID like 12 days ago and I'm still for some reason, not feeling perfect. But we're going to do this. It's going to be fun. Emma Powell is a badass. And if you want to know more about her website is in the show notes. Her bio is already in the show notes as well. And third, when her podcast airs, because I'm going to try to talk her into launching today, uh, when it airs, that we're going to make sure that that link is in the show notes. So roll down right now and just see what's in the show notes. If all three of those things are there, go ahead and click on whatever you want. Emma, thank you for joining me on the podcast. How are you? I'm doing great. And I'm super excited to be here. I don't think I ever interviewed on your multifamily podcast, uh, even though we talked about it. I missed out. And so I was like, oh, I missed out. Right. So now I feel like I'm being redeemed a little bit. Shoot. I saw online somewhere that you were you on Bigger Pockets. I did Bigger Pockets in October of 2020. Okay. And I just interviewed for best ever yesterday. Best ever yesterday. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's pretty rad. Nice. Congratulations. So you're thinking about starting a podcast? I know I have to start a podcast because I feel like it's an important marketing tool in our modern business world. And I always make the joke that it's like all those guys in the 90s who said that they didn't want a website because, oh, why would I need a website? Everybody has a website. And they felt like they were just jumping on a bandwagon at that point and they resisted really hard. And now it would be ridiculous to think about running a business without a website. And so I don't want to be one of those people who falls into that same trap because I definitely feel like I'm like, oh, everybody and their dog has a podcast and can jump on the bandwagon. Wagon. That's when you know that you need one and that it's become a staple of the way we do business. And so I've come to that determination finally. I, I do feel like it's a long term commitment. I want to make sure that I'm going into it carefully and thoughtfully, but especially that I'm not spinning my wheels and wasting my time producing content that is not going to move my business forward on the important KPIs that are our business goals. And so I feel a little bit lost on how to do this in the most effective way possible. Lost on how to do it the most effective way. All right. So let me unpack a little bit. It's become a staple, but you want to make sure that it's actually going to move the business forward and you're lost to know how to do it the most effective way. So what are the KPIs? How do you know if it's being effective? There's a couple ways for me to think about it. First and foremost, it's going to be hard to track in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's the sad part because think of your success with a lot of things being that you really see the fruits of your labors later. Mm -hmm. And with a podcast, for example, it's normally you want to push as hard as you can in the first few weeks and then just keep pushing, but really go hard for the first like eight weeks. And then keep really pushing, you might see some downloads, but the downloads aren't money. It's not ROI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, 
And then after you wait like another six months, a year, 18 months, two years, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, there's almost an exponential growth mm-hmm. where this year you might get up to, let's just say a hundred downloads per episode. Next year in a normal world, next year you might get up to 300. The year after that, you might get up to 400 or 500. The year after that, 600 or 800. And then it starts to kind of grow a little bit more rapidly. So you go from 800 to 3,500 in a relatively short amount of time. And from 3,500 to 6,500 in a relatively short amount of time. And it is because those listeners are telling their friends and all of this. And you still may not see the ROI specifically, just with a higher amount of listeners. There's a few other things. You'll need calls to action. You'll need a funnel. You'll need, you'll need to know the direction, what you're trying to accomplish, have good lead magnets. You'll have to stay consistent, always record on the same time. So there's a few like big overwhelming things that can happen for a podcast if you want to make sure it's working. The first point I'm making though is that it's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be, I put in a dollar, I get in a dollar fifty. That was cool. Let's keep putting in dollars. It's kind of like you put in time and energy and money in the first before you even launch it. And while you're launching it, and maybe even for the first year of launching it, and should start to pay for itself for most people. Now, working with our team is a little bit different. It can be a little bit faster because we're doing paid advertising. And when you're doing paid advertising, you're getting in front of people faster. And so that curve can get ramped up a little bit. But just know, think of it like, I'm going to do this for the long haul and I'm not going to like need an ROI immediately. But onto what types of things like ROI, like how do you know? You might start getting, I call them discovery calls, strategy calls, free coaching calls, discovery calls, what that would mean for you, Emma, like you're trying to raise capital through your podcast. Is that correct? Yeah. So the, we have a couple of markers of whether or not this is effective. One, are we raising capital for our real estate deals, either through joint venture partners or limited partners into our club? The second is that uh, my husband finally came to me recently and told me he's ready to quit his job. And now I'm a little bit of an anxiety reaction because I want to make sure that we have some pretty clear timelines of when we're going to start to see some ROI, not just from the podcast, but from all of the marketing in general. So affiliate links on our marketing, maybe offering some sort of a paid accountability group is what we're launching soon, the beta group for that, where we're not just waiting for large investments to turn around and we're not just raising capital to try and get acquisition fees. We're also launching a fund. So there are a lot of things that we're doing right now to get more active income because we're pretty close to retiring on passive income, but we're not quite there. And I felt, okay, well, we really need to scramble this last year or so before that happens. And I really want to build something that we can continue to work. Uh, Yeah, that would, I don't think I could go scuba diving. I mean, the sinus pressure in the ears, I wouldn't be able to equalize. I'd be able to maybe equalize down to 10 or 15 feet, but I couldn't do it More, coming back up. Like I said, I want to yeah. just be, he tried real hard and he ended up spending most of the week in the hotel room. It was pretty Jeez. sad. Content that doesn't really fit our brand, doesn't really fit our goals. And then we're going to have to pivot later on and redefine it. And I just want to make sure we're, I know we're going to make mistakes, but I want to try and minimize that as much as possible because we got to monetize it very quickly as so that he can come into the business and work on it. So he's going to support a lot of the stuff that's making me nervous, the logistics of it like the technical aspects of it, you know, some of the administrative work that needs done, he can jump and help out with that more than he can while he's working full-time. So that's a huge thing that's happened in the last couple of weeks that I'm like deer in the headlights still. Okay. All right. So quite a bit to unravel. Your husband's looking to move out of the job. You've got so a lot of the passive income. You're basically there, but you just want to feel comfortable. And so you're going to take this year to make sure all of this happens. And by starting a podcast, it's probably going to take money out of your pocket for a little while. And you're like, all right, that is going to become an investment that might not pay off right away. So what can we do to kind of make it pay off? And some of your ideas were affiliates, like being able to sell uh, courses for other people or something like this, whatever the affiliate could be. 
Another idea you had was you're launching your group, your beta group, your accountability group, where connecting with people and being able to charge. A third idea that you had was raising capital and taking acquisition fees, but additionally, the passive income that's going to come from closing. What else did I hear? You want to get a timeline of the ROI. Mm -hmm. I think that way it's just so you can plan. You can just plan on it. So you can know, all right, for the first few months, it's taking money out. Yep. This is when it's going to happen. All right, let's go in with our eyes wide open. Income's going down at the same time our expenses are expected to go up. And that's just fundamentally feels very wrong to me. And I'm struggling with how to make that work. All right. Well, if the listener is struggling with adding the expenses, the one thing that I'll say is always think of it as an investment. Are afraid to kind of put that money out. And I'm not saying this is you, Emma. You might be cautious too, but I'm not saying you're afraid to. I think that someone listening might be like, okay, that makes me feel real uneasy. I'm not sure if I can do that. But sometimes by holding back and not doing it, we end up being in a worse place and for a longer time. And so a couple of inspirational things that I might be able to share is there's this guy, his name is Gary Vaynerchuk. And a lot of people know about him. I've been following him since way before he started his marketing business. And it was when he was doing wine library. And so I worked at a French restaurant as a server and I and a bartender. And wine was a big thing for us. So I used to watch uh, Gary V from years and years and years and years ago. And he was really good at what he did. And for him, his wine library didn't pay off for a long, long time. A lot of the stuff that he's doing in his new business too, doesn't pay off for a long, long time. And Gary said in 2016... When I was deciding for myself in 2015, I am not going to ever work for anyone again. I'm only going to do real estate full-time. So in 2015, I decided I'm going to go real estate full-time. So I went back to Gary V, but now for a different reason. And the thing that he said is... I'm not sure what the English is on that. The thing that he had said was, if you don't have a podcast by the year 2022 you will lose in business. And it's funny because in 2019, mm -hmm. I was hosting a real estate conference that I think you spoke at, or you got on stage at least once, maybe just for a picture. Yeah, I think for a photo. Okay. <laughs> I haven't spoken at a conference yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So you were on stage at that conference. And just a couple of days before the conference, there was this guy who was losing in business. It was 2019. Gary Vee says, if you're not doing it by 2022, or he's been saying that for like five, six, seven years. And then all of a sudden, there's this guy who calls me and he's like, I need to raise capital. And I go, you're not going to be able to do it. Like, bro, he said, usually we can always raise capital. Like normally we can always do this. It's never been a problem, but now we can't. And the reason why was because his passive investors, he wasn't the squeaky wheel anymore because he was a dinosaur in the real estate syndication space and always was able to raise money. But all of his passive investors are hungry for content. And so they turn to podcasts and then they start to get a stronger relationship. It's weird, but they start to get a stronger relationship to some random person that they've never invested with just because they hear their voice multiple times a week. Yeah versus the person that they should already trust because they've invested with him three, four, five, 12 times. Because this guy has been around for a long, long time. He goes, Adam, again, this is 2019, back in September or October, right before the Raising Money Summit. And he goes, I just can't raise it. I'm like, how much do you need? He's like, 2 million. I go, that should be no problem. How much have you raised so far? He said, we've raised 1 million. We need two more. And I was like, okay, cool. How long do you have? And he goes, two weeks. You go, how long have you been doing this? And I think he said something like two months. Oh. I don't remember now. It's been a while. The thing that had happened was, is all of his investors, many of his investors started going to all of these podcasters that had just started. Some of them with no experience, some of them with a lot of experience, but they became the squeaky wheel. And so this guy can't do what he's always done. And that was back in 2019. So imagine now that we're in 2023, 
and more just what's going to happen. So we really need to have that, really need to have these podcasts. It really is like your dot com from the 90s, as you said, people were thinking, I don't need one of those. Everybody else has one. We got to have a podcast somehow. And it's sometimes hard to measure the ROI. If you see that you got to do this investment somehow, because if you don't, people are going to be passing you up and being in front of your client, your investor, your customer, somebody else who's louder than you is going to be in front of them and they're going to forget about you. There's some friends that I have that almost never call me, but they're like my favorite people. And then I have other friends who are friends. They're genuinely like them, not as much as I like that other person, but this friend and I stay in touch a little bit more. So sometimes when I'm thinking about going and doing something, I think about the person that I spoke with more recently, that I heard their voice, that I know that they're around, but that I know what they're up to versus the person that I just have a stronger, genuine connection with. You definitely want to have it. So let's talk about the timeline of the ROI. Let's talk about affiliate, beta, capital, and a couple of branding mistakes, monetizing quickly, pod tech. I'm going to start here. Your husband, you said pod tech, administrative for what? For your company or for your podcast or for both? For both. He is in IT, specializes in automated deployment. So way higher level than what I'm doing, but he would be really good at automating the marketing. And I have a good lead generation system going, but I don't have a good lead capture system going. So people come in and unless they reach out to me, there's nothing going out to them because I'm not great at the email marketing. I'm not great at texting or calling, dialing for dollars, any of that. And so I'm relying on a lot of inbound and trying to stay front of mind so that they remember to call me. And so that part of my business is is really a wreck. And that's what he's really good at. So if he could dedicate the time to what we're doing over here with content creation, lead management, and capital raising, we could really get a lot more traction. But he is starting to feel like W2 is holding him back from helping me get over some of the hurdles that I'm having in my business with just cash flow and being able to afford systems, afford assistance. I reinvest 99.9% of what I make and I need to pull off some sort of a budget so that I can run my business. And so getting the budget, figuring out how much to spend on it, Mm. what the timeline is like, okay, if we budget this much for six months, then maybe we can increase the budget for the next six months. We need to start seeing some sort of an ROI so that we can continue to justify the expenses because things are about to get real tight around here. (laughs) I cannot continue reinvesting as much as I have been, but I don't really know how much to hold back for overhead. Okay. All right. She wants to monetize quickly, not make a brand mistake. So if we make mistakes, I want them to be manageable and we can easily iterate and pivot off of those mistakes. I don't want to find that I'm two years down the road and I've been barking up the wrong tree. Yep. So with brand mistakes, it's just something that a lot of people do. Most people do a lot of branding mistakes. And I know your business pretty well, Emma, since I've been in it as well. And we have so many clients. We have a ton of clients that are syndicators and or uh, real estate coaches that wanted to grow their podcast. And so they came to us. So a business that I have a lot of experience in, but we've also serve a lot of people just like you. And most of them make the brand mistakes, especially if they do it without us. Like if they do it on their own, they normally do. And B... If they're working with me and they're coaching with me and they're in front of me on a discovery call or an onboarding call, then I get, I don't really get frustrated, but it is a conversation that I have frequently with syndicators because of something that you almost what you said, Emma, in a way. You said you want to, you're going to do the affiliate stuff, you're going to raise capital, and you also want to do the beta. And this is in a way, close to the mistake that a lot of syndicators make without our help or even try to make while I'm in front of them and I have to like slap them. And that is, you know, have you ever heard no man can serve two masters? Yeah. The line expansion, the trap of the line expansion. So I do want to avoid that. I want to really specialize and focus, but I've been focusing so much on passive income because I don't need the active income. This W2 supports everything. And now I'm like, okay, now I'm in charge of both. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get my attention split. But at the same time, while we're waiting for the passive income to really start churning, 
we got to now the active income, you know, it's a thing and it divides a lot of people's attention because while you're building your long term, you got to eat and you got to keep the lights on. And so yeah. I'm struggling with dichotomy <laughs> of so, how, to, how to do both. So, and this is partly for the listener as well, since I know you get it, Emma. No man can serve two masters. It basically means you can't listen to this person and this person at the same time. I'm in that experience right this second myself. I have back in March of 22. I had hired a coach that's a physical trainer. And the coach, the goal for them was to get me my six pack before my 41st birthday. And I made it barely, you know, with just a couple of days to spare. And then I crushed my hand and I couldn't work out anymore. And he was still my coach, but I couldn't work out and I was eating. And so I was serving my master of fueling my body the way that it wants and really not being able to do him. So work with him. So even though he was still hired and paid, only one of those masters really got served. And I I gained enough weight that I lost my six pack after about three months of being stagnant. And then I started, hired him back five weeks ago. And during the five weeks, I start seeing some progress, but I want a bodybuilding coach. A bodybuilding coach is meant to make you big and strong. And my coach is meant to lean you out. And so I hired both at the exact same time. The bodybuilding coach got me already. He got me my whole stuff. And so that was supposed to start last week. And so I got one person telling me basically to 18 to 100 to 2000 calories. And the other one telling me I need to eat 3,500 calories. Neither of them are wrong. Both will accomplish something. The problem is, would be completely impossible for me to eat 3,500 calories in a day and 1,800 calories in a day. You can't have a a limit of 18 and exceed 18 at the same time. And one of them has me working out four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then doing at least 12,000 steps a day. And the other one only has me working out five days a week and only doing cardio four of the days instead of seven. And so it's like, you just can't do that. And it's frustrating because I hired this guy ahead of time. Just I was like, oh yeah, I know what I'm going to want. So I'm just going to hire him now. But he created this plat thing and they're, they're both like, hey, you went over on your calories or hey, you went under on your calories or hey, why did you skip the gym today? Or hey, why did you go to the gym today? You just can't do both. And I think about that for your podcast. You've got, if you have somebody that is a passive investor that doesn't want to be active, that doesn't want to do anything. Listen carefully. If you're listening in, you got one person who wants to leverage other people's time, other people's experience, other people's networks, other people's work, other people's time, OPT. And then you got a totally different person that has time wants to put in effort, doesn't quite have a whole bunch of money or isn't where they want to be yet. And so they're kind of needing to leverage other people's experience or other people's money. And so a dichotomy, maybe we're thinking if I've got a podcast, should it attract people for my beta group that ends up being my group group eventually? Or should I attract passive capital? And what most syndicators have said, and this isn't just syndicators, if you're listening and you don't have a syndication company, just think about it like this. Most people in your business think about two avatars, two masters that they serve. And in doing so, they don't really serve either one. So they launch a podcast and they're like, they're all over the board on what do I want to accomplish? Oh, I could do both. I'm going to be in front of so many people that I'm obviously going to raise capital. And I'm obviously going to have a few people that need to be part of my beta group. And they're obviously somebody who could buy these affiliate. But when we are doing more than one goal at a time and we lose, I think, focus would be the term. We're losing focus. We're shotgun approaching. We're all over. That shotgun might be fine in birds, but it's not going to be that effective for for something that missile would be. And so here we run into serving both masters, not really serving either. And the syndicators that have done this mistake have a podcast where nobody listens. 
because half the time this information is for me and I like that. Half the time the information is not for me. And so I need to find another podcast. And both people say that. So both people are looking for a new podcast. So how do you like stay in front of the right person? And here's my advice to make sure we make monetize quickly, understand what the ROI is. You got to at least focus on one. Which one is the most important for you over time, over the next three years? Is it that you have this active income with your beta group that becomes a group? Or is it that you have unlimited amounts of capital so you can keep closing on deals whenever you want? If you only had a focus on one, and I'm suggesting that that's what you have to focus on, which one would it be? The limited partner in the long-term game. I've always been better at long-term planning. And now I'm being asked to be a short-term planner. And I guess that's a question, you know, should my husband be the one who's doing the short-term active income stuff while I just keep on the goal of raising capital and just getting deals done and helping people find opportunities that fit their investor profile. That's what I've been doing. I'm still not that great at it. (laughs) And so there's a fear that if I focus on that, I haven't really had great success already. And and there's no real income from that. And so how are we going to eat? And so I would prefer to focus on the long-term. That's just more in my nature. And now I've got this conundrum. What do I do? (laughs) All right. I've got an idea is the podcast needs to be branded toward passive investor who doesn't want to do the active stuff that they really want the passive stuff. They really want to leverage other people's time. They really understand the value of that. It'll probably be your perfect avatar. So whether that's in many cases, I've had passive investors who are doctors, attorneys, engineers. My favorite one, and it's not like I didn't like my doctors and attorneys, my favorite one to work with was always the engineer. I created my avatar was an engineer. And everything that I did was thinking about that engineer. So I want you to be thinking of your perfect, perfect, perfect passive investor, whether they're a business owner and making seven times more than a doctor or an engineer, or whether they are a teacher and they're super conservative, but they've always put a whole bunch of money out to the side. Whatever your avatar is, you'll think of that. And we're going to brand everything to that. What are we going to brand everything to that? We're going to brand podcast title. We're going to brand the subtitle or the tagline for that one human, for that avatar. We're going to use the podcast logo where we even think of color schemes, fonts that attract that person because that person is this age, this gender, this personality type. For example, they're very well-spoken or they're very timid or shy or they're uh, very forceful or they're very uh, decisive. We can use colors that attract that person. So we do it all of that. We use fonts that are going to track them. My avatar is 75 years old. Probably not going to be the case for most podcasters. My avatar is 75 years old. All right, I'm going to use old school classic fonts. You know, mine is younger than the baby boomers, great, great grandkid. All right, then maybe we're going to use these other fun things, sparkles. Who knows what that is? You figure it out and then you attract that person from every step of the way. You also think about your introduction, your intro, your outro, the music, the original theme music that you create. The intro is going to speak to him or her. The music is going to resonate with him or her. The guest that you have on your podcast, if you've got guests, is intentional to support that person. The questions that you ask are all set up to support that person. So you're not going to make a branding mistake. You'll be fine there. As long as you consider that person every step of the way. But then it's asking, I think I can make more money with the beta group. It might be, I might be able to prove, I might have a better proof of concept with a beta group. And I don't want to leave that hanging now that we already realize the beta group doesn't fit on your podcast. That's the problem. So the idea is coming now. Here's the Mm -hmm. idea that I wanted to share. Beta group serves the opposite of my listener. And everything on my podcast needs to be congruent and intentional to serve that one person. 
So now we've got the anxiety of, but Adam, this thing could be so good and it might work even better than capital raising. It might be way faster and it might solve my problem. My kids won't starve. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what I'm thinking. The beta group needs to be advertised on your on social media. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be with organic and with organic traffic as well as paid if you can. So you could probably work with somebody to help you launch the beta group. And there's courses and everything out there. You could probably... I will help you, Emma. We've been friends for a long time. I love social media. I'm very good at social media. And just giving you some ways of doing organic posts that get the most amount. Now, you've mm -hmm. we've had this conversation before a few yes. times. So I'm I've sure you... with the avatar mightily. When I was a wedding photographer, I had like my ideal bride and I only spoke to her and it worked great, but I've really struggled finding that avatar as a commercial real estate investor. And I've gone several iterations and I'm still not really clear on that. Yeah. And it's been a couple of years and something I already knew how to do and I'm yeah. still struggling. All right. So here's the idea. Bump, 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 all the suspense. It was yeah. killing us. You go ahead and brand your podcast fully to that place, fully to that place. Perhaps don't even advertise your beta group ever, mm -hmm. whether even when it is a full group. At the same time, take your beta group off of your podcast and put it on social media, make phone calls. I think bringing people into my beta group, I offered it first at a meeting, a meetup that I ran mm -hmm. and it got sold out in day one. I mean, do you still run your meetup? Yeah, we meet once a week now as awesome. an investing club. That's really cool. Awesome. All right. So here's what I did and what you may be able to achieve. And if you can't do it on your own completely, maybe we can have another call or record a little bit here. Mm -hmm. I had a weekly meeting as well. Not really a club so much. I've but got a, a second. Meetup. I've got two a week. One is club investing and the second one is just pure networking. Okay, cool. Well, what I did is I designed my pitch, how I was going to pitch it, the best strategy for launching this pre-launch. Mm -hmm. And I uh, went to the meeting. There was maybe like 40 or 60 people max there that day. It wasn't very full. And this was back in 2018, I believe. So the group was only a year and a half old. And I just shared, hey, I'm going to do with this group. I don't remember how much I charge now. I think it was 800 bucks. 889 or something random like that, 887, some <laughs> random number. <laughs> yeah. And so I think it was going to be 1500, but I took like 40% off, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, just for any founding members that are in here that already know you want to join and anchored them with this 1500. And then I said, for anybody who's like just wants to be a founder, one of the first people. I'll just open it up. Literally, it won't go until five minutes of the end of this meeting. I'm just going to wrap it up and that's it. It's your last chance. So that a, gives a little bit of fear of missing out. Like These are all sales strategies. Mm -hmm. It's limited. It's secluded. Fear of missing out. We use all of that. We anchor, price anchor with the 1500, say, take 40% off just for the founders, any amount, and it's going to end at this time. So it ended up where I thought that I wanted, I think I wanted 16 members and I accidentally got like 23 members. Mm -hmm. And so I made like 20 grand that day and it was really awesome to completely sold, oversold it on accident. And it was just by sharing it there. And then I've also done things where I've reached out to people on social and I've connected with them. I've called them. I've private messaged them. I've DM'd them with a voice memo mm -hmm. and just <clears throat> talked to them about, hey, I've got this group. I think you would be perfect for it. Eventually, it's going to be 10 grand a year. Eventually, it's going to be 15,000 a year, 20,000 a year, 30,000 a year. But I want you to be one of the members. So I would be more than happy to just bring you in for 6,000 bucks, whatever the number. It's going to be 30. I really want you in. So it's just going to be six grand and we'll go from there. An influencer who has a podcast reached out to me for his original group and he did the same pitch. I'm realizing he said that it's going to be 25,000 a year. Yeah. All of them are 25,000 a year. And he's like, Adam, like you've got a good following. So he gives me some, he buttered me up. 
He's like, you got a good following behind you. And because I had a podcast in real estate at the time. And I want you as one of the founding members. And I felt so special. I felt so special. And he goes, so I'm not going to charge you 25 grand. I'm going to give you this price. I don't remember the price. I'm going to say five grand. And so I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm saving $20,000. I randomly am not thinking that I'm spending five anymore. I'm thinking that I'm saving 20. It's such a random like thing, but because he price anchored it, my brain goes to this place where I'm like, sick, saving 20 grand. I got to do this right now. And he's buttering me up. He wants me as a part of the group. He wants me as a founder. It makes me feel real good. So I did it. It might've been five grand. And now I'm a member of this group. So it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. And I want you to use a similar thing that what I'm talking about on social phone calls and Mm -hmm. use price anchoring, deal ends today type stuff, not making it sound like a sales pitch. Mm -hmm. The point would be, idea is again, podcast is only about capital raising. Yeah. Social media will be, you might make a video, like a five minute video about what you're doing, or you might mention it and you might say something like, I'm recording this for my Facebook friends. If you are on the operator side, if you want to operate, if you want to do this, if you want to be in a group like this, Mm -hmm. And if you're the opposite person than that, you only want to do passive and nothing else, then you should just listen to my podcast. That's where you get that content. So you're still advertising for your pod. But I should clarify, the beta group, it's active people or passive people? Okay, so I made a a wrong assumption the the whole time. My whole thing is you invest your money now, so you have less money, so you can have more money later. Well, it's the same with your time. If you invest your time now, you will get your time back later because now you don't have to worry about money anymore. And so instead of talking about people Mm. putting money in, I want them to put their time in first because they need to be able to confidently go into a deal. If they're ready to do that, great, let's work with you. But if you're not quite ready to confidently go into a deal, all my content is out there for free. Here's my free lead magnet, Mm. my free YouTube channel, my free everything. But for some reason... You're still not consuming the content and getting to that point where you can confidently make a decision. And so I wanted a group of about five or six people for maybe six weeks. And we just go through everything that you need to be able to put money into your first deal. And it's a short time commitment. So it'll be inexpensive, 1500 bucks or something for the six weeks. And then if they're like, hey, this lights me up, I would like to do this as an active person, then they would go into the club because the club is for more active investors. And I don't want the podcast to be about the club because I feel like the club sells itself. It is free and people show up. So I'm looking for more of people who know that they need a butt kick. You could just go to the gym by yourself, Adam, but you've chosen to hire a coach because he makes you show up. He gives you ideas. He makes you work. He makes you get it done instead of just thinking, oh, I need to do that. It's somebody who can turn it around and actually make hold you accountable to your own goals. And that's, to me, the beta group is more about people who want to invest in real estate and never get around to it. Okay. So I need to say a couple of things. Okay. The idea is still a great idea for a lot of people. If you're split And on. for you, I'm sorry that I didn't ask you that question beforehand, is who the beta group would be for. I should have. It's a mistake though. I think even I You let me go so long with empty. that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, this is a podcast. Maybe if it was just a private recording, I would have been like, wait, 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 wait. It's for a passive investor. And so maybe it could be an income source inside of a passive investor targeted podcast because it's quick, it's short. You have the material for free if you want to DIY it. But if you are not getting around to it, we have a solution. So if by any chance you did a six week course and got five mm-hmm. people in, you would make, I think it was 7,500 bucks in like six that. weeks. And if you divide that by six and multiply it by 4.333, which is the, how do you know what you get in a month? Then <laughs> it would be 5,400 bucks in a month. Does that help you replace the a significant part of the income that you want to replace? That would replace about 50% and I've got the other 50% in like rental income and things like that. And I think if we added some affiliate links and some integrated ads to my YouTube or to a podcast, we could make up the rest of it. So the question is, can we do it in six months? Can we do it in a year? My brother-in-law has a YouTube channel with about 20,000 subscribers and he's doing, I think between 15 and maybe $3,000 a month off of evergreen content. And I'm looking at my brother-in-law. He doesn't even really work on the channel that hard. I'm like, how'd you get 20,000 subscribers? 
I have a friend from business school with a YouTube channel with half a million subscribers and she quit her job. Her husband's quitting his job. I know a lot of people doing this, people in my club who are making 10, 20, 30, $40,000 a month on just affiliate links from their flipping business. I see a lot of people doing this and I feel like I already have this capital raising platform that, like I said, I'm not that good at it. So I really do need to get better at that. But I'm thinking if my husband was able to come out of his W-2 and really put all his effort into building that side of things, I could continue to focus on what I'm focusing on and helping him. It's not like he's like, babe, I want to quit my job and you need to be my sugar mama. That's not what he's saying at all. It's like, how can he make best use of his time? So when he comes out of his job, he is racing towards replacing his own income through helping us build this platform. Yeah. This audience. Yeah. So the beta group is investing people's time. It mm -hmm. would be inexpensive. You want four, five, six people in a cohort. Mm -hmm. and I'm I wanted an active group. I could advertise that in the club to say like, hey, it's five grand for six months of active coaching. I don't know if I want to do that, but I'm saying it. people who went through the initial one and if they're like, yeah, this is cool. I actually want to do this as a career. We have a path for them, but it's not something I feel like I need to advertise or make part of my avatar. Yeah. One thing that I'm curious of is if you do six-week cohorts, mm -hmm. do you think you would need to take a break in between them or would you be advertising for the next upcoming cohort while you're doing another one? Like one's going. Like six weeks on and two weeks off and I might be able to have two of them running at a time okay. so twice a week with two different groups. I want to keep them small, hot seat kind of stuff. It's kind of funny because I'm basically just modeling it after a boardroom that I did with you. And it's funny because right before I sat down, my husband didn't know that I was talking to you today. And he was asking me, he said, well, what are your seven layers of why you're doing this? And I said, you got that from Adam. <laughs> 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 so uh, just modeling it after that boardroom hot seat where it's a small group and every week, everybody takes a turn. And like I said, there's free content out there. Do your homework, Khan Academy style. You know, you do your homework online and then you come to the classroom to be tutored and to work with other people. So that's the concept. And it'd be quick thing. You'd be ready to be a limited partner, but it's also for budding syndicators who are like, I don't even know where to start. Well, just start like a limited partner. You need to know all the same things. What's an IRR? What's cash on cash return? How do you vet a team? All that stuff is important for either one of us. It's just a starting point, but it would definitely be geared more towards people who are willing to invest a little of their time up front yeah. to gain a lot of their time in the back end. And I'm like doing my branding. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. Yeah. Just because of the where we are in time, I bet you have an appointment coming up. And here's where I want to go. So I did the math again because it's eight weeks instead of six weeks, technically, since mm -hmm. you're doing it for six, but taking two weeks off. Yeah. Then you're really making like four ish grand with five mm -hmm. people yeah. at, at 1500. But this is a strong takeaway that you need to write down mm -hmm. is that with this type of mm -hmm. income, it can be advertised on your podcast. I'm not saying whether it should or shouldn't. Okay. I'm saying it absolutely can now that I know that it serves the same avatar. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that it's slow though. Yeah. I'm saying that if you're thinking about the timeline, making monetizing the show as quickly as monetizing the show as quickly as possible, I think it's going to be faster to monetize off the show. Okay. In the beginning. Okay. So go ahead and talk about it on the podcast if you'd like to. That's not a problem. The thing that you need to be conscious of is that you can't rely on the podcast to get all these five people every eight weeks. Mm -hmm. That's a big feat, honestly. Okay. And so still do what I mentioned in the big idea after we came back from the break. Still do all of that. You're serving the same master, but you've got to still advertise it on social mm -hmm. with paid ads, with organic ads. This means you reaching out to people, private messaging people, making posts for people, putting stuff like this in your story and talking about the beta group. I almost think, Emma, mm -hmm. I almost think that you can do the very first time for free. Yeah. We have a development group right now that we're putting okay. together then the beta group will be like the 50 percent off and then eventually we'll have a, okay. a great format okay. that we can do full smart price. so a development group right now yeah this is going to help you learn like what questions they're asking mm -hmm. what they want to know what worried about what they say to each other how it feels to be in front mm -hmm. which lessons worked which lessons didn't 
which examples worked, which yep. examples didn't. And you can start to advertise the beta group on probably on social mm -hmm. and phone calls and dry, private messaging, where you say, we just finished our development group, which was the beta for the beta. And we learned <laughs> this and we learned that. And this is going to be really effective. And we've decided to make it, I'm just going to say 3000 a month or three grand uh, for to join this for six weeks, which will allow you to make passive income to replace your current income. Mm -hmm. And so you're advertising it to them like this. And then you say, I'm reaching out to you specifically because... And then you just fill in the blank. I'm reaching out to you specifically because I know your goals. We've been friends for a long time, whatever it is. You tell them the real reason. Like I'm reaching out to you because... Seems like you really want to be focused on this. I want to bring you in as a beta, not at three grand, but I think 1500 is more than worth it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be able to get you to your goals. And if you do it during the beta, you don't have to pay three grand. Mm -hmm. So now you're giving them that like reason to join now. Yeah. You have to say that basically the 1500 ends at some point. And the best way to do it is, I know you're going to do this group no matter what. I know you need it no matter what. I don't want you to have to spend three grand or, and I don't want you to have to wait. Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to be a part of this group. There's some good people that I'm inviting. You're going to like them and you're going to need this stuff anyway. You may as well save the 1500. Now they feel like they're saving 1500, just like when this guy made me feel like I was saving 20,000 by spending five and they'll probably join you. They'll probably enjoy it. And I think that's the best way for you to not necessarily monetize the podcast, but to monetize with active income. Yes. So that you can easily afford the podcast and everything else that you want will happen. So, and then the affiliate stuff, I am not the best on affiliate stuff. I will okay. say that there's a few people in our space, Rod Cleef, Michael Blanc, Joe mm -hmm. Fairless, Brad Sumrock. And I was one of their biggest affiliates for mm -hmm. all of those people. Okay. By I had people come to an event where that person would speak at. Okay. And then I would tell my people if they should go to this. And a lot of them did. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden they made a lot of money and I made money too. I made yeah. like six grand to like 20 something thousand for each of these events where I just okay. placed people into this butts and seats. Cause I don't ever want to start a conference or a coaching curriculum or like I said, we're close to retiring and I'm a content creator. I really enjoy that a lot more than, yeah. Uh, so it would be make more sense for me to reach out to guys who've already done something that I'm like, I don't want to do that and just become an affiliate link for them. Yeah. If they're like, Hey, how did you get started? I was like, I don't offer that, but you'll enjoy this guy. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of stuff will work really great. I've done some cool things with affiliate marketing, mm -hmm. but not online affiliate marketing. Oh, okay. It's mostly like direct. It's mostly like in person, mm -hmm. making phone calls, social media, our organic posts. But basically through my podcast, I'm going to be honest, we basically only make about 20 bucks a month on my affiliate stuff. So I affiliate for like microphones, boom stands, lighting, soundproofing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we average some right around 20 bucks a month. It's not going to make a difference in your 7,500. No. But I have affiliated individually for events and crushed it. Really honestly work for like three days and make like $20,000. So mm -hmm. it worked out great. It's a little bit better than your six weeks for 7,500 with five people, but three days for 20 grand, one day for six grand or something. So you can definitely do it. Mm -hmm. I just don't know how it's going to be incorporated with the podcast specifically because most of the stuff that you put on your podcast, it's supposed to be evergreen. I mean, you affiliate for somebody's event on episode 50 and... When people are listening to episode something else, when people in the future are listening to episode 50, it no longer mm -hmm. counts. So it can yeah. be advertised, but don't want you to pay more and wait until the group is developed. That's good. I'm glad you wrote that down. All right, Emma, is there any other question before I let you go? 
Can we have another call? Because I got background problems. I got recording stuff yeah. on top of all the branding. So I have a zillion more questions, but yeah, you know, sure. we got to get our kids to where they got to go. So, All right. Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Reschedule again, and we'll answer some of the other questions. Yeah. I think uh, it was good that we spent so much time on this one today. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that the technical stuff will take care of itself if you have the mindset stuff straight. Like I'm committed. I know what direction I'm going. We'll figure out the lighting and the microphone later. I'm not concerned about that part, but there are a lot of details and I'm letting some of the mindset issues and the detail issues combined hold me back from just starting. You need to start. Just remember what Gary Vaynerchuk said. Oh yeah. In like 2015 or 2016, whenever he started saying that, if you isn't by 2022, you'll lose in business. Mm-hmm. So that's enough of the mindset because we're in 2023 now. Yeah. Like as we're and, and this recording is my and MO. this is being published. This is my MO. I spend a lot of time researching, talking to people, thinking, planning. And when I'm about 80% there, I'm like, ah, I'm never going to get any farther unless I just jump. And then I'll just jump. Suddenly people are like, whoa, this is scary. I'm like, no, you haven't seen the previous six months of prep yeah. for this. And so I know that I will do it because that's the way I am. I have no fears. I just, like I said, I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. And I'm still kind of in that phase. Perfect. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for yeah. having me. It's really good to reconnect. You're- yeah, back at you and I'll see you on the next one. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. This is serious. Don't go. Now that you've gotten whatever value that you feel that you got, the actionable takeaways, you need to implement the stuff that you learn. If you remember me talking about bird church once and they learn how to fly and then they walk home I don't want you to walk home. I want you to fly home. So take the steps, take the actionable steps for your benefit so that you can become a better podcaster. That's the only thing that I ask of you. And I'll see you for more actionable tips on the very next episode.